in the cave of Quiberon. It had taken the Golden Wings nearly nine hours to carry Akbad to the Emerald City. It took scarcely five to bring him back, so that it was a little afternoon when the soothsayer and his prisoners reached the sparkling shores of the Osher Isles. Not a word had been spoken by anyone during the entire flight. Trot had started to scream, but the wind rushing down her throat about a mile a minute had almost choked her. When she managed to get her mouth shut again she was glad to keep it that way, her eyes too, for that matter. Benny was too startled to say anything and the scarecrow had all he could do to keep himself from blowing apart. But as Akbad, folding his wings, began to descend, Trot with a long sigh opened her eyes. The five lovely islands of Cheerio lay glittering just below and Trot gave a little gasp of relief and pleasure, as they hovered over the gorgeous Sapphire City. Frightened though she was, Trot's heart began to beat with excitement and curiosity. Surely nothing so very dreadful could happen in a place like this. But Akbad did not stop, and flying over the beautiful city carried them to the extreme end of the last island. Here the waters of Orizon were pounding and roaring between two jeweled cliffs. Between the two cliffs and at the very mouth of a great cave, Akbad closed his wings. With a suddenness that took what little breath Trot had left, they came tumbling down on the narrow beach. Benny got such a thump, he let go the soothsayer's heels and almost fell into the lake. Trot and the scarecrow rolled over twice and, clutching each other wildly, sat up, simply speechless with indignation. You, puffed Akbad, for he, too, was worn out by the long fly, you have been chosen to save the Osher Isles. He shook his long finger in Trot's face. These others may escape if they wish, but you must stay and serve the monster Quiberin. As Trot, blinking her eyes between shock and consternation, tried to understand what it was all about, there came a great snort and splashing and in toward the cave swam the monster himself. Here's your mortal maiden, yelled Akbad, and spreading his wings, rose quickly into the air, leaving Trot and her friends to face the giant fearfish. Benny had by this time struggled to his feet, but at sight of the monster he nearly lost his balance again. As for Trot and the Scarecrow, after one horrified glance, they seized hands and dashed in the only direction open to them, straight into the blue cave. Wait, thundered Quiberin, shooting a long tongue of flame from his fiery nostrils. He was so close that the fire and smoke blackened both Benny's eyes. With a grunt of surprise and displeasure, the stone man snatched up his umbrella and pounded after Trot and the Scarecrow. Wait, thundered Quiberin. I thought you said that in us things would be different, shouted Benny, grinding the jeweled pebbles on the floor of the cave to powder beneath his flying stone boots. Well, isn't this different, stuttered the scarecrow, tripping over a sapphire boulder and sprawling upon his nose. Oh, hurry, begged Trot, jerking him quickly to his feet. Here it comes. At another time the three travelers might have paused to admire the great jeweled grotto, but with this snorting, puffing monster at their heels they scarcely glanced at the sapphire icicles hanging from the roof and jutting out from the sides and the sparkling gems that strewed the floor of the cave. Water rushed through the center and it was no easy task running over the rocks and boulders at the side. The glowing eyes of the monster lighted up the whole cavern. Like a steam engine, he puffed and snorted behind them, filling the air with a sulfurous smoke, till it smelled like twenty-fourths of July rolled into one. At every flash from his nostrils, the poor scarecrow would wince and shudder. One spark, and I am an ash heap, groaned the unhappy straw man, leaping wildly from boulder to rock. What shall we do now, wailed Trot, stopping in dismay, for they had come to the very back of the cavern and could run no farther. I don't know what a real person would do, panted Benny glancing around desperately, but I'll do something. Quick, squeeze into that little opening. There was just time for Trot and the Scarecrow to slip into the narrow crevice at the back of the cave before Quiberin dragged himself out of the water and flung himself up on the rocks. Where is the mortal maiden, roared the great dragon, as Benny placed himself bravely between his friends and the monster. 
Turn off your fireworks. Do you want to burn her to a crisp? shouted the stone man, waving his umbrella boldly under Quiberin's very nose. Can't you talk without smoking? he continued crossly. You're turning me quite black. Speak without smoking, muttered the monster in a puzzled voice. Well, I might try it. Is this better? he grunted presently. Benny nodded and waving the cloud of smoke from before his eyes peered anxiously downward. What do you want with Trot? he asked suspiciously. I want her for a servant, answered Quiberin promptly. She must polish my scales, comb my hair, he lifted a great silver lock that hung between his horns, sweep out the cave and tell me stories. Benny was about to snap his stone fingers in the monster's face, when Trot tapped him sharply on the ankles. Don't make him angry, whispered the little girl. Maybe if I tried it for a time we could find a way to escape. Disgusted at the thought of Trot even looking at such a creature, Benny nevertheless realized that she was more experienced in the ways of this fairy kingdom than he was. Stifling an impulse to jump on the monster's head Benny called gruffly. Will you promise not to hurt her? Not at first, agreed Quiberin readily enough. Not till she tells me all she knows about mortals. That's fair enough, isn't it? With an angry grunt Benny stepped aside and Trot and the Scarecrow slipped out of the crevice. Remember now, no more firing, quavered the Scarecrow, and no nonsense either. Pooh, sniffed Quiberin so vigorously the Scarecrow was blown five feet into the air and only saved by the quick action of Benny from falling into the tumbling stream below. What shall I do first? asked Trot, bowing timidly to Quiberin. You may practice some songs, purred the dragon drowsily. And when I return you may sing me to sleep. Are we going to stand for this? demanded Benny in a furious whisper to the scarecrow, who was balanced insecurely on a sharp spike jutting out from the side of the cave. Hush, warned the scarecrow. I'm thinking and putting his cotton finger to his wrinkled forehead he gazed intently at the ceiling. I shall be just outside, so don't try running away, advised Quiberin, sliding into the water with a tremendous splash and in a few minutes his glittering tail had disappeared through the opening of the cave. Well, exclaimed Trot, clasping her hands resignedly, I've never tried singing a dragon to sleep, but I suppose there must always be a first time. I hope he doesn't put his head in my lap, though. He'd better not, stormed Benny, tramping angrily up and down. I'll dance on his talons, I'll tread on his tail and pull out his whiskers. Maybe there's another way out, mused the scarecrow removing his eyes from the ceiling of the cave. Let's look, proposed Trot, darting eagerly toward the back of the cavern. Hurriedly they circled one entire side without success. Tumbling straight from the top of the cave on the other side was a sparkling silver waterfall. I wonder what's beyond that, muttered the scarecrow looking up at it thoughtfully. Water doesn't hurt me, so I'll just take a look, said the stone man and before Trot or the scarecrow could stop him Benny stepped right through the waterfall and disappeared. With a sharp cry of distress Trot rushed forward. He's gone, wailed the little girl dolefully. The scarecrow looked almost as upset as Trot, for even in this short time he had grown fond of their strange stone comrade. As they discussed in anxious tones what they had better do, the dripping face of Benny looked out through the waterfall. Come on, he spluttered excitedly. Run through, it leads into another cave. Taking a deep breath in the scarecrow's hand, Trot plunged into the waterfall. Benny seized them just in time, for the terrible rush of water took Trot's breath and the poor scarecrow was limp and helpless when they stepped out on the other side. I'll carry him, decided Benny, as the scarecrow made an unsuccessful attempt to walk. 
The live statue was really beginning to enjoy all these strange adventures and excitements. Hurry, he puffed, picking up the poor, soggy straw man. That monster's coming. I hear him. Before they had reached the end of the second cave, Quiberin with a flop and flash came plunging through the waterfall. How dare you run away, sizzled the monster. As the water poured over his fire-breathing nose, steam came rolling in hot clouds toward Trot and her friends. Faster! Faster! You go on, urged Benny. I'll stop him. With the stifling steam curling round her head, Trot ran as never before, all the way through the second cavern and rushed headlong into a narrow passageway that opened out between two rocks. Benny meanwhile, realizing that they could never outdistance Quiberin, stopped directly in his path, first placing the scarecrow on a little ledge beside him. With a snort that shook seven sapphire rocks from the roof, Quiberin opened his monstrous mouth, and without a moment's hesitation the stone man stepped in. The scarecrow, water-soaked and helpless though he was, could not help admiring the courage of his new friend. Down came the jaws of the great fear fish. Crunch! 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 Then, there was a howl of anger and pain and eight red tusks lay on the floor of the cavern. Bite a public benefactor, would you, sniffed Benny, stepping calmly out as the monster opened his mouth, and before Quiberin had recovered he snatched up the scarecrow and pounded after Trot. They had almost reached the end of the dim blue corridor before Quiberin appeared at the head. Five times as furious as he had been before, he came crashing on like an express train. Trot dared not look over her shoulder, and even Benny felt that nothing could save them now. Without plan or hope they dashed on, till an ear-splitting screech brought them to a sudden stop. You look, begged Trot, covering her eyes with both hands. Expecting almost anything, Benny swung round, then instantly gave a great shout of relief. He's stuck, cried the stone man exuberantly. And so he was, a few yards behind them. Smoking, screaming and sending up shower after shower of sparks, the monster lay jammed between the rocky sides of the passageway. So fast had Trot and Benny been running they scarcely noticed the gradual narrowing of the corridor, and so fast had Quiberin rushed after them that he had stuck fast before he had time to stop himself. A narrow escape for us, but not for him, remarked the scarecrow in a moist whisper. Scarcely able to see through the black smoke Quiberin was sending out, and almost deafened by his whistles and roars, Trot and Benny ran on. The passageway was growing narrower still, and after several twists and turns, it came to an abrupt stop. Cave City, Puff Trot The words were studded in sapphire on the rock ahead. Admittance Three Rocks well, we can't go back, sighed the little girl, sitting down wearily, so we'll just have to try Cave City. But we haven't any rocks, observed Benny, putting the scarecrow down beside Trot and looking carefully all around. And will the people of this city welcome us, or Benny did not finish his sentence but looked uneasily from Trot to the scarecrow. There is a great deal of water on my brain, complained the scarecrow, but if someone will ring me out, I'll endeavor to think. Benny looked on rather nervously as Trot squeezed the water from the flimsy body of the scarecrow. Don't forget to wring my neck, directed the straw man calmly. I believe I am the only man in Oz whose neck can be wrung without discomfort, he explained, glancing brightly up at the live statue. Benny said nothing and indeed what could he say? And Trot, after shaking up the scarecrow and smoothing him out as best she could, propped him up against the side of the passageway. I suppose if I were a real person, I could think of something too, mourned Benny, taking off his high hat and rubbing his stone crown reflectively. You're much better than a real person, declared the scarecrow promptly. A real person could not have jumped into the jaws of a monster like Quiberin. I, for my part, am glad you are yourself. Come on, Benny, let's look for some rocks, cried Trot. 
and I shall think of some, said the scarecrow leaning his head back against the wall. But though Benny and Trot searched up and down the narrow corridor not a loose rock, stone, or even a pebble could they find. The walls, ceiling, and floor were of smooth sparkling sapphire. It shed a weird blue light over the three travelers and soon they began to feel as blue as they looked. After searching in vain for rocks, they began to thump upon the door of Cave City, but with no results and had about decided they were prisoners forever in the narrow enclosure, when the scarecrow gave a loud shout. I have thought of some rocks, he announced excitedly. There are three of us here. Well then, we have but to rock with laughter and the doors will fly open. Benny looked doubtful and Trot did not feel much like laughing, but as the scarecrow insisted, they ranged themselves before the door of Cave City. Benny and Trot had to support the scarecrow between them for he was still too wet and soggy to stand alone. Now you laugh he, I'll laugh ho, and Trot must laugh ha, directed the scarecrow solemnly. So at his signal Benny burst into a loud he. Trot into a shrill ha, and the scarecrow into a husky ho. At the same time they rocked all together and fixed their eyes expectantly upon the door. Much to Trot's surprise, it instantly swung inward, and an old mareman on crutches stood in the opening. Well. Well, he began querulously, why don't you come in? Come in. Come in, I'm mighty sorry to see you. Sorry, gasped Trot, as Benny stepped forward, drawing the others along with him. Why? You'll know that soon enough, mumbled the old mareman swinging along ahead of them on his crutches. This way please, and mind you don't tread on my tail. 